So I've gone through the College Board Official Study Guide and I have some previously administered SATs and what I found is that there's a couple of, of quadratics that are tested more frequently than others. So I made this lesson because I want to show them to you and make sure you know what to do come test day. Uh, the first one here is probably the one that I've seen the most is the difference of two squares and that's this one right here. So you should know that x squared minus y squared is going to break down into x plus y times x minus y. And if that seems a little foreign to you, probably more familiar in school, if you had x squared minus 16, you should know that that's x plus 4 times x minus 4. x squared minus 25, x plus 5 times x minus 5. All right, so really the, these occur when you have a perfect square in the second spot. And even though they give you variables here, y squared is a perfect square. It's just y times y. So we're going to go into some examples with these in a second, but just be aware that this is the most popular one. Uh, the second one I want to go over is x squared plus 2x plus y squared. Kind of looks like just a, a mess there, but that really is x plus y times x plus y, which is the same thing is x plus y squared. So getting the tougher questions right is going to require you to recognize that this is the same thing as that and the same thing as that. They're all the same thing. An example, x squared plus 8x plus 16, that's equal to x plus 4 times x plus 4. And x plus 4 times x plus 4 is just x plus 4 squared. So you want to get good at recognizing or, or being aware that these are all the same thing. Okay, and kind of the opposite situation is this one right here. x squared minus 2xy minus y squared is equal to x, mi x minus y times x minus y. And that's the same thing as x minus y squared. Okay, an example of that, x squared minus 6x plus 9. When you do your double bubble and you factor that, you're going to get x minus 3 times x minus 3. And that is the same thing as x minus 3 squared. So the whole point of this was just to get you in the mindset that uh, you can represent this as that as well as that. So all these things are the same thing. Let's just do some examples to see if any of this is kicking in. So I put some, uh, some SAT style questions here. If a squared minus b squared equals 12 and a plus b equals 4, what is the value of a minus b? All right. So we should recognize that this one right here, that should look familiar a squared minus b squared will factor into a plus b times a minus b the whole thing's equal to 12. They told us that a plus b is 4. I'll pop that in. I'll rewrite this and we can solve rather quickly now and we can show that a minus b equals 3. So that's the advantage of being able to recognize those common quadratics, the ones that are are tested more frequently. What you don't want to do, and I think what a lot of students end up doing in a problem like this, is they see, oh, a plus b equals 4. So they write it over, and what do they do? They minus the b from both sides, and they get a equals 4 minus b. And they try substituting this thing into this whole thing, and, and you can get the right answer. It's just a whole lot of work. Recognize this, you'll save a lot of time. Let's do another one. Okay, let me move this up a little bit more. If x squared equals y squared plus 8 and x plus y equals 6, what does x minus y equal? And again, you can pause the video here if you want to try them on your own. I'm going to go into the explanation. So let's rewrite this. x squared equals y squared plus 8. I'm going to minus the y squared from both sides. And you'll see why in a second, because we get x squared minus y squared equals 8. That's our difference of two squares x plus y times x minus y, the whole thing still equals 8. And they told us that x plus y is 6. So, we'll pop that in there. Very similar to the other problem. Alright, I'm kind of running out of space here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by 6. Okay, divide both sides by 6. Let me just make sure you can see that. Okay, so those cross out. And what do we get? x minus y equals 8 sixths, or if we reduce that, we get 4 thirds. So come test day, if this was a grid in, you would just grid in 4 slash 3 and bubble in the right numbers. Okay? I'll just cross that out there too. Alright, let's keep going.
Let's get some more practice in. And just give me a second to set up the paper here. All right. So now we have this one, slightly different. If a squared plus b squared equals 20 and 2ab equals 6, what is the value of 2 times a plus b squared? Again, you can pause the video if you want to try it on your own. So I see this part and I see this part. I don't exactly know what I'm going to do with it yet. But when I see a plus b squared, I know I can expand that. So let me write that. That's going to be 2 times a plus b times a plus b. Let me FOIL this, so I get a squared uh, outer ab inner ab, so that's 2ab plus b squared. If you need a review of FOILing, uh, you can check out one of my videos on that. I'm just going to go through this a little quickly, or quicker than usual. Okay, so that's going to be 2 times, so what can, we, what can we pop in now? We said 2ab equals 6, right? There's 2ab, so I'll put 6 there. And now the nice thing is that I have a squared plus b squared. Well, that's from before. a squared plus b squared equals 20. So I can write in 20 plus 6. All right, and it looks a little confusing because the a squared and the b squared are, are separated by the 6. But since this is addition, you can just move things around. So we get 2 times 26, which is equal to 52. Okay, so I'm happy I showed that one to you because it's not your, your typical problem. Let's try another one. If a plus b squared equals 64 and a minus b squared equals 36, what is the value of a? Okay, so for this one, it's, it would take a lot of work to expand this whole thing out, so we're not going to do that. But let me ask you this. What squared gives you 64? 8, right? If you said 8, you're the big winner. So a plus b should equal 8. What about 36? What squared gives you 36? Well, if you said 6, pretty obvious, right? That means that a minus b has to equal 6. So what you can do in this case when you get two equations, you can stack them one on top of another. And what I'm doing here is called combination. You're probably familiar with it. If not, I'll, I'll, I'll do a lesson on it. You can, so when you get two equations, you have two variables, two equations. You stack them on top of one another, and we can add them. So a plus a, 2a. b plus negative b crosses out. a plus 6, 14. Divide by 2, divide by 2. a equals 7. Okay? So that's one way of avoiding all the work of expanding this out. Another way to think about that problem. Uh, finally, we're going to end here. And we'll probably end with the skin of our teeth here. We're getting close to the time. If 3x minus 6 times 3x plus 6 equals 12, what does 9x squared minus 36 cubed equal? Well, we should know when we see this, this is the difference of two squares. So when I FOIL that out, what do you know? First... 9x squared, the inner and the outer cross out, we get minus 36. And that whole thing is going to equal 12. Well, what do we have there? 9x squared minus 36, but it's to the third power. All we have to do is raise that to the third power. But what we do to the left, we have to do to the right. So now, all I'm going to do, and... I left the calculator in the other room. Oh no, you know what? I'll have to do it by hand really fast. 12 times 12, 144. 144 times 12, 8, 8, 2, 4, 4, 1, 8, 12, 6, 7, uh, 1. So your answer should be 1,728. Whew. Thank God I made that in time. <laughs> okay, so that should be your answer. As long as you had that, uh, you'll be correct. So again, I hope this, these problems helped you as a bunch of practice uh, with those common quadratics. If I don't talk to you, good luck on the SAT.